Welcome everyone to the Derbzilla channel. Today, a very quick follow-up video on my Viper Turbo Fan. I did a review video on this fan a few years ago, and I also had this fan in the video kind of mentioned about my you know, feelings of how these two fans compare. I had a number of people ask me in the comments some actual specifics on, you know, does this fan flow more air or does this one, how's the noise between the two? So for today, I'm gonna go ahead and do some comparison, do some tests, and then we can go ahead and find out which one is actually better. For my uh, airflow comparison testing between these two fans, I did pick up a pretty inexpensive anemometer from Amazon is not a fancy one that does a direct CFM uh, readings or anything like that, but it does have a couple different nice options here. As you can see here, it does a foot per minute and it does not miles per hour, meters per second, kilometers per hour, but I'm gonna go with a uh, foot per minute and also kind of cool, it does measure your uh, air temperature. So, you know, this can be actually a multi-purpose thing if you wanna test your vents in your home or anything like that but you know the air temperature is not really a big concern between these but we will get a good reading on uh, how much actual airflow is coming from these fans now it's not going to be a super scientific thing where it's going to be in a sealed chamber or anything like that i figure i'll just go uh, with this uh, meter here and i'll just have the fan on full power whatever the highest setting is i'll move it around and it has a max hold and whatever the max reading is that's what I'll go with for each fan. That's going to be kind of like if I'm laying against the fan, which you're not going to actually do, but I'll do that as the first test. And then the next test, I'll come some distance back. Maybe, um, maybe I'll do like three tiles back. Each tile, I believe, is 16 inches. So that'd be 48 inches back. So kind of like, you know, if you're sitting kind of close to the fan. And I'll just get it nice and centered and take a reading. And then I'll do that for the other fan. And then we'll just go comparison. You know, which fan is actually getting me better airflow uh, at a certain distance. Now, of course, this fan is a 30 inch fan. This one is 24 inches. That's the size of the blades. The shroud is 27 inches on this. I think the shroud on this is 32 inches. But uh, so, of course, this will have a wider area where you'll have, you'll actually feel more airflow. This is more direct and more of a burst. Now, if you actually look at the specs on their websites, I actually wrote these down. The Viper fan, it says it has a max of 23,554. Uh, CFM, whereas the 30 inch uh, box fan is rated at 13,000. Now, of course, that's kind of, that's like best case scenario in some kind of scientific chamber, vented and all sorts of fancy stuff. You actually don't feel that amount of CFM uh, between these fans. You're not gonna feel 24,000 or whatever CFM coming out of this thing. It'd be like a jet engine knocking things over. Uh, so that's not really a realistic value. That kind of just compares you but if you do look at the motors on this thing, the Viper motor is a beast. I mean, I have pretty big hands. And then if you look at the barrel fan, it's got a little baby motor. So, uh, but another thing to note, this is a three blade design. Each one of these blades, I believe is 15 inches. And this one is a five blade design. Each one of these blades is uh, 12 inches. So you have five blade versus three blade, larger versus a smaller. So you have those other factors. And we'll figure out, you know, which one is noisier. We'll do a test close up and then we'll do a sound test that's kind of like on the other side of my garage and we can compare, you know, which one has, uh, you know, a better sound, a lo lower decibel sound, which one is lo more loud, more obnoxious. And, you know, if you're trying to make a video, you have fans running, you don't want a fan that's super loud because it will, uh, you know, you'll be picking that up on your microphone, which is never good. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple tests with this one. I'll then move it out of the way move this one in the same position, same distances, and then we'll test this one. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out our uh, speed test here on the airflow. And if you can see this has three positions, low, medium, and high. I'm just gonna go straight to high, which is what's supposed to be their highest setting. It may be hard to hear me, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get our meter here, and we're gonna set it to your max, and it'll lock on the highest setting. And this is gonna be the upfront test.
Here we are about 48 inches back. And once again, I'm going to set this to a max hold and we'll hold it about center. Now the fan is walking on me. It's slowly pushing itself uh, sideways. So if you can see the front end, it's kind of turning around. I'm gonna try keeping it centered, move it around in a few positions, see if I can get some good readings. All right, looks like it's locked in at around uh, 905 feet per minute. The Viper is positioned pretty much the same way uh, as the barrel fan was. I lined it up with that line on my tower right here. Now don't ignore this front leg here. It's actually lining up with the grill and not the actual mount. Now this thing does not have three set positions. It has a full um, percentage from zero to 100. So you have a lot more fine tuning on this one compared to the other one. So I can dial in exactly you know, how much noise I want, how much fan speed I want, which is a very nice feature. Plus it can oscillate with this little uh, pole switch push down or pull up. Go ahead and I'll max this out. It's gonna get kind of loud. You might not be able to hear me, but I'll do the same test. I'll do all around the front grill here, you know, right up on it, get the max speed. I'll move back 48 to 50 inches, which is three tiles back. Take the same measurement. Of course, I'll reset the max each time and we'll see what we're reading. Three tiles back, about 48 to 50 inches. Reset the max. And we'll go ahead and lock it in on the max. There we are. As we can see, it uh, appears that the barrel fan at right up on it was 1,358 foot minute, 905 foot minute at 48 to 50 inches or so. I just wrote 48, but, and the Viper was 1,614 right up on it and 1,161 foot per minute. So you see it is an increase of about 250 or so, almost 300 for the right up on it, which is, you know, unrealistic. Who's gonna have the fan right up on their face? <laughs> uh, not very many people. And then it's got a about 250 uh, foot minute advantage as well for at a distance of, you know, three foot or so, uh, actually four foot or so. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty decent noticeable thing. I do feel it pretty good in comparison to the barrel fan. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll test the, uh, the sound, I have a cheap, actually free, decibel meter I picked up off of the storefront. Sorry for the glare, um, but uh, yeah, this will measure a, uh, the sound produced from each of these fans. And what I was thinking about, if it's, it's not really accurate to test it right up in here because you just have wind buffeting and that kind of throws off your reading. So I figure I'll just go back to the end of my car here, my Camaro Gel one and I'll go off to about right here, this tile, right here by my wheel, ignore my feet there. And then, uh, which is a kind of, you know, I'll be working maybe from here distance away, or I can move up actually. We'll say to be more realistic, we'll line it up with this tile right here. <laughs> the one right in front of this wheel, not too far away here, kind of what I'd be working with if my fan is mounted up here. And we'll take a decibel reading. We'll take the average and high, um, and then we'll see what we're looking at for decibels on this fan, and then we'll move to the barrel fan. The Viper fan is maxed out. We're gonna move back. And uh, we don't want the, the fan actual, um, to be blasting us directly just because we don't, we don't want to have actually wind buffeting kind of thrown off the reading. So I'm kind of like off center with it a little bit. 
And uh, as you can see here, lined up with the top black tile that's right here in the same spot so I can replicate it. And then we have the meter right here. I'm gonna hit reset it and then we'll set the average and we'll see what we get. All right, I went and paused it, ran it for a few seconds, so 20 seconds or so. Average of 72 decibels, which is not too bad, but I guess we'll see how it compares to the barrel fan. So I'll go ahead and get this turbo fan moved out of the way, barrel fan position, and we'll take a reading from the exact same spot and see what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to high and then move back into position, and we'll take a same distance reading, off-centered a little bit, just like the Viper fan, and we're at the same tile right here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and we'll get a good clean noise reading. Not sure if you can see that, 22 seconds or so with an average of 82 decibels. We have the final results on this very fancy piece of paper that I wrote everything down on. Our decibel difference is we had 72 decibel average uh, from the same distance versus 82 decibel average with the barrel fan. So the Viper fan takes the win for sound and noise. Definitely a much less annoying sound coming out of the Viper and is also much lower than the barrel fan. Of course, it's a bigger fan. It's got five, you know, three bigger blades and you know, it's just a hollow shell so it makes more noise and you can actually hear that pretty obvious while working in the garage. Now for actual airflow, the Viper wins once again. This one has a airflow of 1,614 foot minute right up on it. That's just a direct reading, nothing fancy scientific. That's just feeling how much air I actually feel with the meter right here up on it, which is kind of an unrealistic <laughs> measurement because you're not gonna have the fan literally strapped to the side of your head or anything like that. And so that's why we also did the 48 inch measurement, which gave us about uh, 1,161 foot minute. And we have the loser here, the barrel fan from Amazon, which is 905 foot from distance and 1,358 foot right up on it. This one would be even more awkward to try to get right next to your head because it is a barrel fan pretty much on the ground. This one can be put in this nice three-piece stand, which actually one of my negatives with the stand is it would be nice if the thing could fold up out of the way, which it doesn't, or if it had wheels, which it also doesn't. This does have wheels, but it's not very stable. And as you could see, maybe in the video, this thing actually started walking by having on high and actually would start twisting uh, pretty much clockwise. So if I left it on too long, it might've spin completely around like the exorcism or uh, exorcist or whatever. And uh, yeah, so the Viper fan uh, takes the win on noise and on uh, overall airflow of what you can feel. Now this one can actually move more air. I think overall, if you're trying to actually turn how much air you have, how many times you want to replace the air in a, in a space, this one, I believe I did some calculations I uh, was giving me something like 6,600 CFM, and this one was doing something like 5,300 CFM. And that takes into account the uh, area of the fan itself versus this much smaller area, and then also your airflow readings. So this one, if you're just trying to turn air in a space, not what you're gonna directly feel, this might be a better option. It's also a little bit cheaper, 200 something dollars. I think this is 400 something dollars. So, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Now. Um, not really part of this video, but I wanted to point out, I did actually a uh, wall mount my Viper fan. So if you saw my previous video on the Viper, I had it on the mount, but I went ahead and wall mounted it to get it out of the way. Cause uh, as mentioned that big tricep uh, uh, tripod mount is awkward. And it's kind of hard to move around it because just of the weight of the fan and the tripod, it doesn't, it doesn't really sit anywhere because it has a wide footprint 
which is kind of a negative with that setup. So I did move it over to my wall over here and the wall mount bracket is pretty good. My only complaint is I wish they made the bracket wider. It's not wide enough to cover two uh, studs. So you actually have to mount two of your screws into the stud and then two with T anchors in the drywall. If they made this wider with extra holes, you know, for multiple versatility on mounting, I would love to have this mounted into two studs. And then if somebody doesn't have, or they have a weird layout where it's a wider difference between studs, they could actually then do the, have a separate set of holes for uh, drywall mounting uh, that they could utilize. So if this was wider, it'd be, it'd be a nicer option. And I wish the fan itself, because with a wall mount, it's, you can't reach the speed adjustments or the oscillation feature. So it'd be cool if they actually had a, a way to either uh, do a speed adjustment through the cord or something like that. Uh, right now I'm gonna be just running it to a wireless outlet that I'll control from my phone, but I can, it'll just let me turn it on and off. It won't let me adjust any of the options or speeds. So that's a negative, but I mean, it is nice to have an option. Whereas the barrel fan, you, that's it, that's your option. And this thing, it's not the greatest on, it kind of just, if I lean it forward, it might just flop over a little bit and it just, no matter how tight it is, it doesn't really stay in a, a position other than just straight up and down and it rotates. So, <laughs> so th there's that. Hopefully this video answered any questions you may have had regarding the Viper turbo fan versus the 30 inch Amazon barrel fan right here. I had some questions in my Viper turbo fan insulation and uh, review video. And I wanted to get those questions answered uh, probably in the most uh, technical, but not scientific way with those actual, uh, you know, wind speed readings and decibel readings between these two fans to kind of just show you guys, uh, you know, if you're looking at these kind of fans, show you what you're looking at between these two. Of course, you know, the Viper fan is about double the price. So as often many things are, you kind of get what you pay for. So I still recommend the Viper turbo fan. I still use it. I have it installed on my wall as mentioned, and I use it pretty much every day I'm in the garage. The barrel fan, it's kind of, you know, since it's so big and what it not, I really just kind of leave it there unless I need to push it out to my driveway and I use it kind of out in the driveway area. Uh, it works great for that. Uh, you know, it does have some issues with just overall uh, quality and noise level. So if I'm trying to record a video, I just can't use that fan at all because you'll just hear the fan and nothing else. And you know, I'm probably hard enough to hear as it is. So guys, if you uh, enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, uh, subscribe to the channel. Always uh, trying to put out more videos. I have hopefully a lot more coming out very soon. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment, ask me on this video or any other videos. I try to answer every question as soon as I can. And I'll hopefully catch you guys on the next video. Peace.